Yo, what's going on YouTube? Hope you're having a good day. I get this question asked a ton and that is what are my span settings and why do I use my span settings? So I want to make a really quick video explaining how I set up my span. So you guys always have something to go back to a reference in case you ever forget and why I personally choose to use this span over say the traditional one. So I'm going to show you what the traditional one looks like and what mine looks like and you can see if it's something that you like and want to use in your tools. Um, if you guys don't know what span is, it is a spectral analyzer, which pretty much just shows you where your how loud your certain frequencies are throughout. It's one of the most powerful production tools I can think of. It's what has allowed me to level up my level of mixing and mastering by just being able to understand it and reference it with other artists. So I want to kind of explain what I look for and what I do when I use spam personally. So I hope this video is useful for you guys. If this video is useful for you. Hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss any videos coming out. I'm releasing two videos a week to really give you guys a ton of content in this next month. So I hope you guys appreciate that. And we're almost at partner. So I'll show this somewhere. You guys are able to watch my videos through and leave more comments and likes. It does help me get pushed harder in YouTube algorithm and allow me to become partner quicker. So a little self plug there. I appreciate y'all. Let's get it. Okay, so on my left is traditional span and span is free. It'll be down in the description below for you guys. You can download on Mac, Windows. This is just the free version of the paid I'm going to show you what it looks like in span. So this is default and this is mine. Okay, let's just hold it for a second. Behind is a song that's coming out next month called Stimulate with the homie Grizzly. But the traditional span has a long average time of 2000 milliseconds. And that's roughly around two second average rate where I turn mine into a very quick 50 millisecond reaction time. So you could see that they were reacting very differently. Mine was reacting more and you'll notice that there's a two tone color. That's because I also put mine in mid side. So let me show you what it looks like when you're in stock. This is what it looks like default. And what you're going to do preset mid side stereo activate it. You'll see two bands here. I changed mine to blue because I hate green personally in this and then I'm going to turn down my average time here like that. I'm going to go to mid here, click it to side. And I'm going to turn this down as well. Now, don't forget to click back to mid because if you don't, you're just going to see your sides. So if we click back to mid and now we do it again. Now we have it in real time. So why do I do mid side? First of all, I can see my stereo imaging on my master. For those wondering where you play span, it's always at the end of your chain. My mastering chains over here, span and my Luffs meter, which you can use Swiss Army meter. Um, or if you want a free one, which is just loudness meter, it's free, does the same exact thing. I'm just looking for my Luffs really. But I use these at the end of my chain. And why I do this? Because I can see phasing if there's ever whatever your default side color is if you see that solo that means it is out of phase that means when you collapse it to mono you're going to lose this signal here so i can always check if a certain sound is too wide so for example if i want to check i don't know whatever this is see if i type it so i can see that this is a very mono compatible signal this is just like a build phase i can see that it's not out of phase so if i collapse to mono i'm completely safe or this version i cannot Another thing is I want to go to my drop real quick and I want to show you guys just really quick what the difference looks like. And I can see in real time if there's any really high resonance where this one takes an average molding. See how I can see this one bouncing a lot quicker. I can see in real time if that hit it allows me to analyze this stuff. Another thing I really like to reference and it goes well with both is Generally, you can tell if your loudness is good without even a Luffs meter by looking at the negative 30. Negative 30 mark right here will show you your round negative two to three Luffs. And so I want my sub to be hitting around here and then my high is something like that. So.
And this one does the same thing. You can read it on the left, but it's much slower and takes a little more average time. I always want to see stuff in real time. And personally, I always just pull up span and then just drag it to my other monitor, which you won't be able to see, but I always have that over there. So I can always just reference while I'm sound designing, mixing anything. I don't have to keep pulling this up. And it's super useful. So I think you guys should really give this a try. Just listen to other songs and look at their curves and try to replicate that in your own tracks. That's one of the biggest things that's helped me. It's what Lax showed me a long time ago. I think it works great. So I hope this video helps. Hope you guys learned something. I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>